Well, good evening and welcome. My name is Darren Barton and welcome to this evening's Hangout. Now, I'm just going to uh, do a little bit of chit chat, just make sure that we're uh, recording OK. So it's just about to come up. Um, yeah, there we are. So we're uh, we're recording. OK, now then we had or I had uh, some challenges, shall we say, uh, with my Internet uh, on uh, when was it now? Friday. Um, and I seem to be having similar problems today. So um, in advance, uh, just want to um, make sure that I've got everything loaded up and that's what I've done now. So first of all, um, big welcome. So I'm a couple of minutes late. I'm just trying to shut everything down, then reopen everything again. Um, internet seems to be playing OK. So hopefully uh, you can see and hear me all right. Um, so just very, very quickly, because um, what we're going to do is we're going to go through um, a little bit of an explanation. Obviously, there's lots and lots of people now uh, very interested in, in doing the binary option trading. But obviously, what we're going to be doing today is actually doing some live trading. So um, I want to make sure that you guys know um, exactly what we're going to be doing, why we're going to be doing it. And obviously, if you're new uh, or you're watching a recorded version of this, um, then obviously just making sure that you've uh, logged in and just following some of the principles uh, that I'm going to be going through later on today. Now, then, um, if you scroll up to the top of um, sorry, if you scroll down to the bottom below me, uh, you'll notice that in the first comment section, I have just put a couple of links and basically these are hopefully useful links for you. So if you don't have now, we're going to be using pocket options as a binary trading platform tonight. Um, doesn't really matter which uh, platform you're using if you're just practicing and using the demo account. Uh, if you're interested in our binary bot, then obviously uh, the first um, uh, platform that we're going to be connecting it to is pocket options so it just sort of makes sense that if you haven't got a binary options account at the moment then just use the link below um, and that will obviously get you connected to the binary bot once it becomes live and you are one of the lucky people who gets hold of it all right um, i'm not going to go into the why's and wherefores with all that because i don't want to waste any more time uh, going through that with um, jeremy i'm sure we'll go through that on friday um, also below that, you'll notice that point three is our chosen charity. This is Zucal's, um charity. They're sponsoring um, a dam building exercise um, in order for um, in combination with uh, water aid. So if you like uh, the information that you're getting on uh, on this hangout, then I very much would appreciate you uh, just dropping a little bit of um, a donation to water aid. You can do it. You know through water aid completely or if you want to help us uh, with our particular um, sponsoring then obviously you can use the link that's below there in the chat um, as well all right other thing the last one to go through is if i just quickly scroll up obviously we've got the live chat which is going on over here and um, obviously if you are watching it live it won't work if you're watching the recorded version clearly if you do have any questions then please make sure that you put them in capital letters. It just makes me, uh, sorry, it just makes it really easy for me to look at them, uh, or spot them rather, uh, when I'm scrolling through. Because obviously, um, as we go through, there'll be lots and lots of comments on there um, and little bits of chat in between individuals. Uh, it's just a lot easier for me to see the, the questions if they're in capitals. All right. So hopefully everybody is now uh, up and running. So. Um, what I'm going to do, first of all, is just go through a little bit of a presentation and just show you the th types of things that we're going to be looking for. And then, like I said, we'll come out of that and we'll dive straight into uh, our binary options account. And then we'll start to do what we've learned in practice. We'll start to put some of that into theory. And like I say, I'll keep popping into the, uh, the live chat there just to uh, see if we've got any questions. All right. Brilliant. OK. Right now, the first thing I need to do is I need to um, share. So I just need to make sure that um, uh, I keep quiet now because obviously uh, I want to make sure that I don't make any mistakes on this because I'm not very good at multitasking, as, uh, as some of you will be aware. OK, All right. So just make sure that you're seeing that. So just bear with me a moment. 
I'll just have a quick drink while I'll wait for the, uh, the hangout to catch up on my end. Okay, right, we look to be look to be okay. Right. Okay. Oops. Right there we are. There we are. So first of all, uh, like I say, welcome to Zookle.com. Uh, if you're completely new to Zookle and you want to know uh, more information, then obviously get in touch with the person who um, suggested you watch this video. Or if you've just stumbled across this video on YouTube or on um, or on Facebook, then of course, if you want more information, then just go to zookle.com. Today, we're just talking about binary options trading, and I'll explain why that is in a moment as we go through this presentation. And like I say, if you haven't got a binary options platform uh, already, then just use this link here, which is uh, goo.gl forward slash uz capital Z R5M, um, or just go to uh, pocketoptions.com. Um, and just open a free account. You just need to put in an email um, and you're basically good to go. Um, if you are using this link, then again, uh, just make sure the promo code says ESTART100, all right? Okay, so uh, for those of you looking at Zookle, Zookle for the first time, what are we or who are we? Uh, well, you can obviously find more information at zookle.com. This is obviously just a, a bit of our website. Uh, basically, what we do is we're, we're going through the process of uh, creating trading bots or helping people trade financially um, using uh, crypto trading bots. We've got crypto to crypto. We've got crypto to fiat or fiat to crypto. We've even got um, crypto to uh, gold. And we've got those bots all up and running at the moment. They will help people with you know, very little time uh, or very little knowledge about trading. They will help people uh, start to accumulate either crypto or some additional fiat wealth uh, using those crypto bots a lot of information on the website and obviously if you want more information then just um, have a look at the people who leave comments on this video on this video uh, and just get in touch with them and i'm sure they'll be able to um you know point you in the right direction of of what zookle can do and what zookle can't do we're also in the process of creating a binary trading bot, which, again, is the reason why we're doing this hangout. And we're also, as we announced last week, in the process of creating an arbitrage bot. And you, if you don't know what arbitrage is, um, it's basically making money or profiting between different prices of things. Um, I'm not going to go into that at all today. Um, again, I'm sure that Jeremy will go through that on the uh, Hangout on Friday. So there's our website, uh, lots of information there for you. And obviously, we've got lots of um, social proof, if you like, or testimonials uh, on the website and on our Facebook page, uh, if you want to go and have a look at those. And like I say, if you want to get in touch with any of these individuals, I'm sure they'll be able to, uh, to help you uh, understand a little bit more about Zucal and how it works. Uh, as I've already mentioned, uh, we have a... a uh, charity that we're working with which is uh, the water project or water aid and we're in the process of helping uh, this community create a sand dam which obviously will enable them to uh, to basically access uh, fresh water and obviously benefit from the facilities of that uh, it's a great cause and like i say if you appreciate anything that we do or if you make profit using some of the trades uh, tactics that we're going to show you again we really appreciate if you could don't make a donation um, to water aid it's a, it's a really worthwhile cause okay so here we are binary options trading um if you don't know what binary option trading is don't worry hopefully in the next 10 minutes you will become an expert what is uh, binary options well as you can see uh, this is may look a little bit complicated um it's essentially you're making a decision if you like whether it be a bet or a guess or um you know a a decision made on facts about whether a price of a particular product in this, in this case we're looking at a cryptocurrency called burst whether that price over the next time period that could be as as much as a minute it could be as little as uh, sorry as little as a minute or as much as five minutes or even a day it really depends on the platform and how you're trading it uh, whether that price is going to go up or down and if you are correct you're going to win some money if you are incorrect then obviously you're going to lose the cost of your bet so that basically is how binary options work 
What we're going to very quickly cover today is we're going to go over some safety tips. We're going to build our management plan, uh, money management plan. We're going to very quickly talk about price action. We're going to then talk about understanding and interpreting signals. In this case, we're going to look at candles in particular. We're then going to uh, look at interpreting indicators, which is the Bollinger Bands. And we're then going to look at putting these uh, indicators and uh, signals together into what we could look at as a, as a good or a bad chart. And we're hopefully going to help you uh, identify charts or currency pairs that you need to stay away from and some that you might want to invest a little bit of time into. And then, like I say, finally, we're going to put all of this together into a particular trading uh, uh, plan and then we're going to do some live trading and i'm going to basically walk you through exactly what we do okay so let's have a look quick look at the trading safety tips and unfortunately i've spelt this incorrectly but anyway hopefully if you trade safely <laughs> basically um we want you to um trade safely as in you need to know that you're going to lose some money certainly in the early stages of learning hopefully that won't be a great deal and if you learn correctly and you are disciplined, then obviously you're then going to start to profit. Clearly, those of you who are using our binary bot, you could sh basically shortcut some of this learning curve. And obviously the binary bot will help you to make profits um, on a regular basis. Um, however, we're going to be showing you how to do this manually. Now, what I suggest, this is all me personally okay so me personally i have two accounts i have a demo account and i have a live account okay i don't have money in my demo account and i'll explain why that is in a moment uh, when we go live but basically um, it just stops me from flicking between the two and sometimes making mistakes sometimes getting overexcited um, and going into a live uh, trading mode before I'm ready. So I always have two separate accounts. We're going to create a money management plan. Um, and once you've created it, you need to stick to it. Then once you actually do start trading live, make sure you're betting small. We're talking $1 here, $2 here, you know, not massive amounts, okay? And, and then obviously, if you do start to increase it, make sure it's increased in line with your money management plan. Only, okay, really importantly, important, only use money that you don't need, okay? I have people contacting me saying, you know, will this um, platform take a credit card? Well, yes, it will. Um, any business will take a credit card because basically they want your money. However, if you are using a credit card in order to bet, then just be mindful of the fact that if you lose all that money, you've not only lost that money, you then also need to pay that money back to the credit card. OK, so you're going to lose twice. So please only use money that you do not need. Now, that may be uh, $10 to some people. It may be $100. It may be $1,000. It may be $10,000. It really doesn't matter. OK, but make sure that you're only using money that you can live without. And if you do go through losing streaks, as everybody does, then never chase the losses. Never think, oh, I've lost. I've just lost $200 here. I need to continue trading until I make that $200 back. Don't, okay? Just turn everything off and walk away. It can sometimes be the hardest thing to do, but this is all part of your uh, trading plan. And like I say, this is your exit plan, okay? Have an exit plan. So if you are only going to lose uh, $100 today, then if you do lose $100, then make sure you exit, okay? You switch the computer off, go and walk the dog, make a cup of tea, Go and do whatever it is you need to do. OK, please do not think that you need to go chasing those losses. OK, make sure you walk away. OK, so we talked about management, money management plan. OK, there's two parts to this money management plan. And this is really important that you decide before you trade how much you are prepared to lose. OK, so today, how much am I prepared to lose? I'm prepared to lose three thousand dollars in our trading account, okay? So if we go on a losing streak and I lose $3,000, then I will just, you know, regardless of the fact that we're on a hangout, I will just simply walk away from it, okay? Now, I'll, I'll be polite and I'll switch the, uh, the hangout off, but I will just simply walk away. And um, now as a trading plan, okay, we have a trading balance, as you'll see um, 
when we go into live trading mode of about thirteen thousand dollars now we should be trading between as a guy between one and five percent now if we had a trading plan a trading balance of ten thousand dollars then if we were going with five percent we would be trading with five hundred dollars each time if we went with one percent it would be a hundred dollars each time and just look at those numbers and decide how much of a, a value that you're comfortable with and then stick to it so it might be that you're uncomfortable with trading with five hundred dollars so perhaps one hundred dollars is near your comfort level and if that's the case great but stick to it don't chop and change between these during a particular trading session so as you can see here if i was going to go with five percent i would be going with five hundred dollar bets each time now this will allow me to trade to lose effectively 20 trades okay i.e 500 times 20 losing trades would cost me ten thousand dollars so it's just basically trying to help you understand the relationship between how much you've got in your starting balance how much you're prepared to trade on each uh, place on each trade and then realistically understanding how much you could potentially lose so part two how much are we going to bet each time and then if we do lose what are we then going to do about it now we're going to do today is um, we're going to do a one for one betting plan which basically means that we're going to place one bet and then if we win that bet brilliant but if we lose that bet we're going to bet the same amount again straight away and we're going to place that bet immediately straight afterwards okay you can do a one for none which is basically you place a bet if you win great if you don't then you just wait for the next signal or you could do a one for two which is you place a bet and if you should lose it then you would place a second bet straight away but it would be two times the amount of your initial bet okay and then obviously you got one for three one for four and so on and so on so therefore what does all this mean well basically if we were to bet three hundred dollars on our first bet if we were to lose it we would then place immediately a second bet of another three hundred dollars okay so hopefully you can understand that we're going to be doing a one for one all right price action movement so if you've never done any trading at all this will be brand new knowledge okay so what are we talking about well as you can see here we've got the australian dollar and the canadian dollar okay and basically this is the price action between both of those currencies and as you can see the price starts low here and then rises rises up a little bit more and then does a little bit of a jiggery pokery flattens out a bit and then as you can see it sort of rises again gradually and then is a big price drop and then starts to fall away again here this fluctuation in prices happens all of the time and binary options is all about making sure that over the next time period is making sure that you guess which way the price is going to go so if we were trading this area here we could place a bet that the price of um, of uh, the price here is going to rise or the price is going to go down if we were saying it was going to rise then we would have lost our bet but the price actually went down in which case we would have won our bet so that's basically what we call reversal or swing trading it's basically betting on the opposite of what is actually happening at the moment next thing is understanding and interpreting signals now we've just seen some uh, squiggly lines which don't really mean a great deal so what we've laid on here is what we've called candles now these are now I do apologize I forget now whether the Chinese or Japanese I think the Chinese um, pricing um, mechanisms they used to use it for the price of rice I think um, in some you know ancient times but basically the way that uh, candles work uh, it can look very very complicated when you first look at it but what you need to understand is that a green candle is where the price has gone up during this particular time period and a red candle is where the price has dropped back or gone down during that particular time period you'll also notice that there are some little thin sticks whether it be green or red uh, either side of some of those candles and we often refer to those as wicks 
hence the name candles. And basically how they work is very simple. Again, you can see, let me have a look at this candle here at the top left here. So you can see here that during this time period, OK, the price of this candle started here, OK, where my white cursor is. And then during the time period, the price rose and then finished just here. The next time period, the candle price starts exactly where the last candle finished. But during this time period, the candle price drop, the price of this particular item drops. So the price falls down here. OK, and you can see where this, this wick at the bottom is. So it came down as far as here. But then just before the end of this time period, the price rose again and finished here. OK, so that price difference is telling us that the price actually fell this far, but actually closed at this point. And it's at that point that the next time period starts where the candle, um, the price of this candle then rises, OK, and then closes at this point. But you'll notice that there's wicks either side of this candle. And that basically means that during this time period, the price will have fluctuated between a low at this point and a high at this point. But it finished at this point here. But because the price was higher than where it started, that candle turns green. OK, now sometimes again next to it, you'll notice that this candle is a red candle, but the price of it started here. Now, there's what we call a gapping. So that gap there um, has been created, which means basically the price has jumped from this candle or this time period finishing and this time period starting. And that can often happen. OK, and then obviously it just continued. And basically what we're looking at is not only the um the type of candle the size of candle the shape of candle or even the pattern of candles there's all different ways that you can interpret these candles however what we're going to do is something incredibly simple we're going to use something called a bollinger band now bollinger band is something that we're going to set up today and as you can see we've got a low bollinger band here in green and we've got a high bollinger band here in red or a high line in red and obviously between those two band those two lines is what we call the bollinger band there is another line that runs through the middle but we're not going to um, particularly focus on that uh, today uh, there is another strategy for that but we're not like I said we're not going to come uh, focus on that today we're just going to look at this top red one and this bottom green one now the way that you can interpret the candles in relation to this bollinger band is very very simple what we're going to do is we're going to notice that as the price comes out the top of a bollinger band the next thing it wants to do is actually get back inside this bollinger band and then again here you can see has the the uh, candle pokes out the bottom of the bollinger band the next thing it wants to do is get back inside the Bollinger Band. So in principle, the price always wants to be inside the Bollinger Band, and that's the signal that we're going to work with. Now, if we were to use this particular graph here with that particular strategy, you could see here that we would place a, as this candle rose out of this Bollinger Band, we would make a bet that the next candle would then do what we call a reverse it would go down so we would place a down bet and as you can see we would win that bet there again here you can see that the candle comes out of the bollinger band so we would then place an up bet because we think the price is going to go up and as you can see we would have won that bet here now it doesn't happen all of the time as you can see here we've got a candle that just comes out of the bollinger band which we could have then said, OK, well, the price next candle is going to go up, but it didn't. So we might have then placed another bet. Remember, we're doing a one for one. So we would have lost that bet. So we would have made placed another bet immediately straight afterwards. But we would have lost that as well. However, eventually the price did go back into the Bollinger Band. But just bear in mind that we could have lost six hundred dollars on those two losing bets remember a bet of 300 and another bet of 300 both would have lost that said time goes on we've got another winning um bet here bollinger band comes out 
and we're going to prep bet that it goes up and then again we've got another winning bet here another winning bet here another winning bet here and then we've got another winning bet here but you see what's happened is the price went up so we would have placed a down bet but because it didn't go down it went up we would have placed another down bet our one for one and we would have won that and then again we would have won this bet here so in this scenario you can see we would have won one two three four five six seven eight out of nine trades just in that particular time period so that is the uh, signal i.e the candle and the indicators i.e the bollinger bands that we're going to be using today so what sort of charting are we going to look for what sort of um things are we going to be noticing on charts to see whether it's uh, an opportunity for us to make some money or at least some good um bets which we've got a good chance of winning so let's first of all have a look at what a good chart looks like now this is um, a good chart now all things being well okay we cannot trade um in um with hindsight we can only trade with what is going to be happening in the future however this is an ideal trading pattern and the reason i'm saying that is because you can see that the bollinger bands are fairly narrow or getting narrow here okay and then this line here that runs through the middle is fairly flat okay it's not very very flat but it's fairly flat and basically what happens is you can see that the price is coming up to the bollinger band and then back out in and out in and out in and out in and out all the way across this time period before we then start to get to some craziness as those bollinger bands start to wind and up and you can see that that fairly flat line then starts to take a sharp dip here um, again during this process you can see that we may have may have won one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen nineteen out of twenty one trades that uh, we would have won there so that would have been a very profitable what would that have been about an hour and a quarter a really profitable time period but it's about recognizing when a price which is crazy here is then going to go through to some some sort of flat period okay so that's a good chart we're now going to look at bad chart now why is this a bad chart because you can see that the bands are still quite narrow well the differences are is that this band period here is quite wide and this area here we've got wideness going into sort of um a really tight funnel and then it's expanding again straight away and this has been repeated in this area here see it's quite wide then shrinks in you think it's going to go into some sort of um, funnel or tunnel type uh, pattern that we've seen before but then the uh, bollinger bands start to widen out again and that's caused because this pattern here this uh, moving average in the middle is on the way up you can see that i've indicated it by saying it's on an uptrend now this is quite subtle and you could get caught out on this but you need to understand that you know if it, if that band there is going up or down you probably want to stay away from that particular uh, pairing until it sort of settles down a bit okay and as you can see as an example we would have won one two three four out of five six seven out of seven trades so we would have um we would have lost about a third of our our money just on those uh, simple trades and again similar time periods about uh, about an hour and a half that time period there and uh, it wouldn't have been very productive for us at all okay so we're going to do some live trading uh, i'll very quickly go back to the um uh, to the hangout just see if we've got any particular questions make sure i've not left anybody behind um so what are we going to do well we're going to do um when we get to what I call an event, okay, so that's where, let me see if I can go back to the chart. Okay, so this is what I would call an event. So an event is where a candle either pops up or comes down below a Bollinger Band, that creates an event, okay? So when we have an event, um, we're going to use um, one minute candles, we're going to use Bollinger Bands, and I'll show you how we set all this up, don't worry. And we're going to be placing a reverse bet 
uh, when the candle either closes above or below the Bollinger Band. And our money plan is that we're going to be using a one for one betting plan and we're going to be using between uh, $300 and I think $600. It really depends on where we are with our trading balance uh, today. But whatever it is, we're then going to stick to it. And I'm prepared to risk, like say, $3,000 during the course of uh, today's trading. And basically, that is our plan and we're going to stick to it. So let's go and do some uh, some live trading. So before we get cracking, let me just go over to um, the Hangout. So do we have any questions? So I can't see anything at the moment in capitals. So I'm hoping that we have um, no questions. Everybody is happy with what we've got. I'm all for shortcuts. Yes. Yep, 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 yep. Bit late. No problem. All right. Okay. So let's uh, everybody if you can uh, go into your um, pocket options account if you've got that and we'll um, we'll let uh, get going so i'll just wait for my pocket options account to to warm up i'll just have a quick drink okay right now then uh, so as you can see i am clearly in my demo account We've got um, $12,900, uh, so we're going to call that uh, $13,000, right? So we're going to call it $13,000, and we're going to find what 5% of that is, which is six fifty. All right, so what I will do is I will trade with $600 today, all right? Um, like I said, we're going to do a one-for-one. One. I'm not sure what's happening with this at the moment. I'll come back to that. Right, let's just very quickly go across the top here. Now, if you click this box here, okay, you can see all the different pairs that you can um, you can be trading. So you've got currencies, you've got cryptocurrencies, uh, you've got commodities, and you've also got stocks. Um, now, cryptocurrencies, um, I'm just going to have a look at Zek B Tech again, see if that will load up. Which just doesn't appear to be, which I'm not sure why that might be. Let me just refresh the screen. Continue demo. Oh, there we go. Right. So let's just go to cryptocurrency. I'm going to Zek BTC. Okay, so I'm on I'm on Zek BTC, and as you can see, we have this this line system. Now, the first thing we're going to do is create those candles. So you want to come over to this box here with the squiggly line on. Click on that, and we're going to choose the candles section here. So you just click on the candle sign. And then it'll open up these time periods. So it'll, you could have candles which are five seconds right up to one day. Now we're going to choose one middle, one minute candles. So we're going to click on M1. And that, once we've done that, we're then going to close that box. And you can see now we've got one minute candles. Now you can already notice why I've come to Zek BTC. See that flat line? Okay, we like that flat line. We may have missed the opportunity, but we like the flat line. Um, we're now going to go to our indicator. So we click on this, um, I don't know what you would call it, squirrely line. So we'll click on that box. And we're now going to click on Bollinger Bands. Now you can, of, all, of course, experiment with all of these indicators. Um, and we may cover these as we go through the weeks ahead, but we're just going to focus on Bollinger Bands tonight. So you click on that box and you're then given uh, some choices. Now, normally, depending on how um, bullish you are, okay, how confident you are, you could ch play with the time periods and the deviation. Basically, the time period, the longer the time period, the smoother that middle line is, okay, that sort of uh, bluey line. The deviation, the higher the deviation, means the wider the bands are. 
So to give you an example, if I put 30, oops, I put 30 days or 30 periods, I should say, which is 31 minute candles, okay? Um, and if we then put, uh, I'll put three on there, okay? The green um, is our top line color, and we're gonna make that quite thick. So we're gonna put two pixels. And the bottom line, we're going to make that red. And we're going to make that two pixels as well. And then we're going to click OK. And basically what will happen, it will now overlay that Bollinger Band over. OK, so now if we just slide it across, you can see here that it's quite a nice, smooth um, moving average. But there's very few signals. All right. Now, it really depends on how risky or risk averse you are. OK, now the 30 and three will give you a lot less signals, but those signals could be quite good signals. So as you can see, as we scroll through here from five o'clock this evening, you would have had a winning bet there. You would have had a winning bet there. You would have had a winning bet there. You would have lost here. So you would have won three, lost one. And that would have been it. So you can see, um, just if we just focus on this area here, that the deviation of three has made those bands really quite wide. So if we now go back to that box, we click it again. And now what we're going to do is we're going to change, click, click on the current indicators. And we're now going to click the little pencil icon here. And we're going to change that now to 20 and we're going to change this to two okay and we're just doing this to just show you the difference between those two bands now so now in that same time period you can see how those bands have come closer together and that middle line is a little bit more choppier than we've probably experienced before now this time we've got a winning trade here we've got a winning trade here we've got a winning trade there possibly one there um wouldn't have made, placed a bet there we would have eventually have won that one there we'd have won one there possibly depends on how how much you're going for it but you might have won one there certainly won one there but again you would have lost here so just by shrinking those um the deviation from three to two you can see that he's now opening yourself up to more winning trades now we're going to do it once more i'm going to click on that box again and we'll click the indicators and this time we're going to go from 20 we're going to go to 15 and the deviation if we went to 1.5 okay and click ok and again now you can see we've got lots and lots of signals there's a win there's a win, there's a win, there's a win. There's a loss there, possibly. A win, another win, another win, a win. There's a win here. There's a win there. There's a loss. No, there's a win there as well. Possibly a win, definitely a win. Win, win. Possibly a win there as well and definitely a win there and again you would have still lost this there's nothing you would have done even at a 30 um, time period you would have lost there so you can see by shrinking those uh, those down it's creating you especially when you've got that sort of flat um, trading pan an opportunity to make some really good wins however we are trading um any you basically any um anybody can make winning trades if they're doing it historically it's about what happens uh, in the future that's the important thing so let's just go to the future now so as you can see the price the um in this scenario the uh, prices started to shoot up and you've got this huge uh, up left here we would have left the trading at this point we wouldn't have been making any trades at this point it then starts to calm down a little bit and we will possibly have then come back to then start looking at this uh, market again for this time period 
but you can see here that again we would have lost here so is this the beginning of this type of this type of thing again so you can see that you you need to be really much in tune with the pairing that you're trading but also the patterns that it's creating all right so what we're going to indicate is again hopefully open that box and for tonight i'm going to be trading at a time period of 15 and a deviation of 1.75 okay which is it's middle of the road if, ish if you like for the way that we're going to be trading today it's going to create me more signals to show you how to trade um, but it also creates more risk um, it's not a, a pairing that i normally would trade um, unless I was really confident about the way that that particular market, excuse me, had been trading during the course of, um, say, a couple of hours. So what we're going to look for is we're going to look for um, a pairing that is starting to settle down. Now, I'm going to go with cryptocurrencies simply because I, I go with cryptocurrencies more often than anything else. So I have a, a better feel for them. So all I do is I go to cryptocurrencies, I start at the top and I literally just scroll down. I just keep clicking them and I just have a look to see what that pattern looks like. So I'll go to BT Max, don't like that. I uh, don't know how you pronounce that one. Let's just pull this one out. See here we've got craziness, but it might start to be settling down a bit here. Uh, not convinced so we'll go out to whatever that is ltc nope Monero. nope ripple definitely not uh zek i'll i'll come back to this one because I, I quite like what it did and it might settle down in the next few minutes so what i will do and again you can do this as well is i'll just click this star here and what it will now do is we'll put this chart into sort of into this area here which allows me to just click on it quickly uh, let's go to bitcoin eos ethereum zk Bitcoin Cash. Now you may be get a little bit frustrated in thinking, well, hang on a minute, you need to be trading. I need to be showing how to trade. What I'm showing you here is going to okay. Right, I'm on Neo BTC. Okay. Now you can see that the the overall price middle line, okay, there's a bit of a dip here, okay, and it's what caused this here, but it is sort of level if you squint, okay, it's sort of level, and yet the price is opening up a little bit, but these candles are really, really long, and that gives you sometimes an opportunity to have a play if you like and remember if we're in our demo mode this might provide us with some opportunities to do some trades so what i'll do is i will star this one and we'll flick between zec btc tc let me just have a quick look at xmr now xmr is a normally quite a good favorite of mine I don't think it's going to be behaving really for tonight in time for tonight. Okay, so let's just have a look at these two. So I've starred Zec BTC and Neo BTC. Now I'm on Zec BTC. And you can see here the price is rising. Now what I'm going to be doing in order when I then how do I then make a place of bet? Well, you can see that we've got two timers here, one on the left, one on the right. Now, I, or in the course of today, what we're going to do is we're going to be looking at the right hand timer. And what we want to do is make sure that that timer there 
it'll go down to 30 seconds and then it'll go to one minute 29 seconds and then it'll go down from 29 down to zero what we want to do is wait until that timer gets down to something like one minute zero five so about five seconds four seconds three seconds and that's when we're then going to be placing our trades so you can see here that the price has risen up the bands have gotten really wide but they seem to have come back in the price seems to have come back in the bands and it now seems to be making some sort of sensible headway so we've got 10 seconds here let's have a quick look at neo btc let's go back to z tech now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to place a bet now all right now i'm just placing a bet all right now what that means is that i'm betting that that price is going to fall i don't know whether it's going to go up or down in all honesty but i just want to show you how we make that we make that um, placing of the bet now at the moment the price is still going you can see that the the countdown here i'm just moving my market so you can see the price has gone down um which is enabling me to make a profit but i suspect the price will also go up as well we notice here it's now going to one minute 23 22. so we're going to wait now keep an eye on this line here okay it's giving me a guide at the moment that we're making a profit um but if we make if it goes in my favor then great but if it doesn't i'm going to lose 500 dollars so you can see the price is dropping and the countdown goes down to one second and we've just won 970 dollars now that was a complete guess all right that wasn't based on any trading pattern whatsoever it was just a complete guess in actual fact i thought the price was going to go up which is why i made that that bet so we'll just wait for this to happen just go back to neo btc let's have a look at that now you can see here that we look like we could be entering our little funnel or tunnel i should say our little tunnel phase here so if these candles could continue to get you know nice and long like this then we could have quite a bit of fun with neo and btc let's go and have a quick look at Zach. okay keep an eye on this here this, this countdown so the price isn't going to do anything over the next six seconds i wouldn't have thought so i'm just going to have a quick drink while we wait for that to change go back to neo btc nothing there either okay i've just quickly come back to the chat okay have we got oh rocco got a question what are the settings you normally use when trading okay just push that on a bit okay okay rocco it really depends on what it is that i am trading i normally trade with go back to our deviation here sorry our bollinger band settings i personally trade with a period of 20 and a deviation of two that's my default okay uh, what that does is it provides me with a stronger more um more not more signals less signals but those signals are generally better signals they're not going to sort of continue to go uh, up or continue to go down and um, what i'm doing today is trading with a shorter time period and obviously a smaller deviation just to try and create more signals so that that i can demonstrate how to how to basically how to place those trades the other thing that actually i forgot to mention is really important is that the time period here so it says time until purchase ignore this clock okay but this m1 here is really important if you click on that you can see that you can change it from one minute two minutes and three minutes that basically if we click on the three minute you see how that line moved so that basically would mean that i would place a bet that would last for at least three minutes now at the moment i'm only trading one minute candles because i want i don't want to wait too long for either a, a decision to be made whether the price was good or the price was bad so i think that the it normally defaults to one minute but if you want to 
experiment with two minutes or three minutes if that suits your style then obviously you need to make sure that you change that um, each time because i think the default is one minute i'll just come back to the chat just in case there's any other questions so if you've got any questions just stick them in the uh, in the chat and i'll show uh, i should get back to you right let's just see what else we've got trading wise this seems to be settling down now so let's go over to neo btc right I'm going to quickly see that. <laughs> okay, so you can see how that price popped up here. Okay, now the time here we've got 12, 11, 10 seconds. Now I'm not going to place a bet here. Uh, in fact, what I'll do is I'll place a down bet. Okay, so I'm I'm betting that the price is going to continue falling, whereas I think it it might go up. Okay, but I just want to. Oh, for goodness' sake! Don't tell me I'm going to start. Same as we did last week, where I just I couldn't lose. Um, hopefully, I will lose this one. You won't hear me say that very often. Because um, what I want to demonstrate is how you do the one for one. Um, but that doesn't seem to be working, does it? So you keep an eye on this time period. Okay, it's going down 33, 32, 31, 30, 29. Okay, uh, we'll just click this. All right, price is going up. Great. So I was betting that that price would go down, and it's not. It's not gone in my favour. So I've now got 16 seconds, and I'm going to lose this bet. So what I would normally do, okay, is I would wait for it to get to about three seconds, and I would then place a second bet that the price is going to go down like that. Okay. So you can see that here. Okay, I was thinking that the price was going to go down, but it didn't. The price went up, which meant that I lost that bet. So because I'm doing a one for one, it means that I now place a second bet for exactly the same amount of money. Okay, in the hope that I now will win back enough money to offset my losses for the first bet that was wrong. Now, I would be doing this outside of the Bollinger Bands. Okay, I'm only doing it here inside the Bollinger Bands simply to demonstrate um, how to how I would use a one for one um, betting <coughs> betting thing. So you can see here, I'd lost five hundred dollars on that first bet, but if I was to win this bet, okay, which looks like I am, and I've just placed a note bet, okay, uh, because the Bollinger Band bopped out of that um sorry the candle bopped out of the bollinger band at the bottom but you can see that i lost that first bet which was 500 dollars. so i placed a immediate second bet okay for another 500 dollars, which basically means that i've now won back 970 dollars, of which 470 dollars will obviously offset the losses of that first bet so hopefully that that makes sense let me just get rid of that so what i did here very quickly the candle was coming down here we keep an eye on this got to about three or four seconds and i placed an up bet because we are our system tells us that if the price comes below the bollinger band we think that the price will automatically go back up okay which it appears to have done and obviously we now want another 970 dollars so we started off with, uh, I think it was 12,900. 12, okay, so we're not doing too bad, even though we're, <laughs> we've tried to lose some money. We're not done too bad. So I'll just quickly go back to the chat just to make sure that I've got any questions. No, we've got no questions. Right, so we're coming up to uh, 8 o'clock. Uh, what I might do is just trade for another few more minutes. Um, if you guys want to follow me, um, then we can do that. Uh, if you've got any last questions, now is the time to actually um, answer those questions. Uh, ask those questions, and I'll get back to you. This one, Neo BTC, looks like we're going to go through a period of some stability. So this might be one that you could do some practicing on in your demo account. Uh, Zec BTC um, again. Okay, it's had a bit of craziness here, but you recognize this pattern. If I just scroll out, recognize this. 
okay it looks like we might have a little bit of this going to be bolting onto this time period here so again these might be two good ones to keep an eye on over the next hour or so if you want to trade have a practice Let's just go here yep yeah, see here same thing but in reverse okay bit of craziness settles down for a time period that looks quite flat um, and tradable okay so so these look like ones which you know if you are looking at doing some practicing zec btc and neo btc look like they could be quite productive for you let's go back over to neo btc uh, see what we're doing here this one looks like it's been quite good for large parts of today you know it's i know the price i know obviously it looks squiggly but you've got to bear in mind that this is from half past two if we come into woof, a bit of craziness there and then it's really settled down hasn't it yeah zbtc i would imagine that the there's a couple of losing bets there possibly but uh but now i can see lots of winning opportunities there okay zip btc okay right looking like we're getting close here nine seconds oh nearly see there i'm just going to place an up bet with one second to go and i've missed it see how i've missed that there now if i if i entered the market really not in a place where i'd want to then if it was quicker i would then place a reverse bet immediately I've missed that opportunity now because obviously I'm trying to explain it. But you see how that was like one second and I placed a, a speculative up bet. And by the time I clicked it and it had been registered, the price had moved. So it, it was placed in the middle there. Now, if that was the case for you and it wasn't in a place that you wanted it to be, then the best thing to do is effectively place another bet almost immediately because that way you're going to sort of counteract it. You'll lose one, but win the other because you've effectively placed the bet in exactly the same spot. So you can see here as the price moves in between these two spots, it's irrelevant to me whether I win or lose because I'm going to get that profit. But we're down to two seconds and we're going to go up. Okay, so I might have done that too quickly for you. So basically what's happened is that the price come out of the bottom of the Bollinger Band. So obviously our system tells us to place an up bet, which is what mm -hmm. I've done just there. So just to remind you, I mean, Zec BTC, um, hoping. Now, if it goes up here, we're on like 30 seconds, if it goes above this Bollinger Band, then again, you may have another opportunity to place a down bet at the same time. So I'm just gonna give it, I was going to give it a little bit longer then, but obviously not. <laughs> so we'll give that 14 seconds to count down, see what happens with that. Okay, there we go. Now, I would stay out of this market now because you've got a big gap between these two candles all right now you may have placed a bet and you may be thinking okay well i need to place another reverse bet and you may win it okay okay so you may be winning that bet but because it's that candle has started outside of that bollinger band that there looks too similar to this sort of gapping so it looks too risky for me to be risk to be placing bets so i would let that one go now i may lose a winning trade here but i would rather lose that winning trade than continually lose money when this type of thing happens so you can see how you know it looked like it might have been a winning trade but obviously there's a big gap happening so i'll just wait with this for a few seconds just to see how that pans out yeah so there you can see so it's just finished and you would have lost money there but experience is telling me to stay out of that market because 
that candles has not started from inside the Bollinger Band. So you see here, the candle starts from inside the Bollinger Band and comes out, but then you can see the candles here are already outside of the Bollinger Band. Now, if I was a speculative man, this looks like a real high, so I'm going to place a down bet. Okay. For some reason, it's not letting me place that bet. Okay, it's placed that bet now. Now, I've just placed a speculative bet here simply because that looks like a day's high. Okay. And you would imagine that it's not going to like the day's high. It's going to come back from that. But again, I would do this only while playing in uh, a demo mode. It's not something I would risk $500 of my own money. Okay. But it's just, again, an opportunity that it's done quite a lot of down movements here. Okay. It's trying to make up some of that price, but it might have gone too far for its own good. So that's why I placed that speculative bet here. Let's just quickly go over to Neo BTC. Similar thing here. Okay. So we would have placed a bet here. It came out of the Bollinger Bands. We would have placed an up bet here. But again, here it's gone in uh, reverse. It's reversed. So we would have lost that bet. So now you might be looking to place a second up bet for it to go up there. And it looks like I've just lost that Zek bet. Just shows you, doesn't it? Okay. Right, there we go. Look, <laughs> I've actually lost for the first time here. So I've lost $100 during this trading. Okay, but that was like, say, a speculative bot, uh, uh, bet there. And here, I probably would have lost again if I'd entered the market here, but obviously caution, cautioned me against it. Let's go back to this Neo bet, just see how this one works. See here, so you would have lost that bet because it, you would have placed an up bet here because that candle had come out of the Bollinger Band. You would have lost it because the price came down. So you would then place a second bet for the price to go up. And again, hopefully you would have won that. You can see we've got just a few seconds to go. Yeah, so you would have won that bet. So you, you would have won that trade. Okay, let's go back. I'll stop sharing. I'll just go quickly back to the Hangout. Let's make sure that we're all caught up. Questions. Uh, Rocco, to me, when to place a second bet is not clear. Okay. Well, hopefully, Rocco, I've just explained that, but let me go back to um let me go back to that chart and hopefully I'll explain it to you. So let me just zoom into here. So if you can go to uh, Neo BTC, okay, and we'll just quickly go through this this scenario here okay so you can see here that red candles the price has dropped out of the bottom of the bollinger band okay so that creates your signal so as the price is coming down here you're watching this countdown here on the right hand side get to about four or five seconds and as it comes to about here about four or five seconds you'd click your green button and you'd make an up bet because our system is saying that if you come out of the Bollinger Band like here, then the price is going to want to go back into the Bollinger Band. So you would have placed an up bet. So that would have been where you would place that up bet here. Now, what actually happened was the price of that candle continued to fall. So you would have lost that $500 in my scenario, you would have lost that $500 here because the price fell. OK, so this is when you then place your second bet. So as you wait for that candle to finish, OK, you're looking at this countdown button here. So when it gets to about four or five seconds, clearly the price isn't going to shoot up. So you would then place your up bet again, your second up bet. 
And because of that up bet, because of that candle then went up in price, you would have won that bet. So that's when you place your second bet. So hopefully that answers the question. Let's go back to Zec BTC, see if that one's. Yeah, same thing here. So if we zoom in here. So in this scenario, the candle came out of the top of the Bollinger Band. You would have placed a down bet because you would have thought that the price would have gone down at this point. I think I've just realised I'm not sharing, am I? <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> oh, dear. Right, start again. Right, I shall go and start again. Sorry, Rocco. Right, let's go back to it. Right. <clears throat> okay, let me come back. To, so I'm at Neo BTC. Okay, that's where I am at the moment. And we're going to look at this big green candle. Okay. So the price went up. Okay. And as the price went up, you would have been on alert because you know the price has gone up. You looked at this right hand countdown till it got to about four or five seconds. And you would have then placed a down bet because if the price goes above the Bollinger Band at the top, our system is telling you to place a reverse bet, so to go down. So you would have placed, in my case, a $500 bet that it would have gone down. Now, it didn't go down. The price continued to go up. OK, now it would have been obvious with about four or five seconds to go that this price is going to stay up here and I'm going to lose that bet. So that's when I would then have placed a second bet of $500 that the price would go down, okay? Because our system says that if the price doesn't go down first time, it should go down within the next candle, okay? Now, in this case, it did go down, so I would have won that bet. So it's, it's about waiting for that candle to finish and it's keeping an eye on two things it's keeping an eye on this countdown here at the top right and it's keeping an eye on the price of uh, of your particular candle that you're looking at okay so let me just stay on this candle at the moment because it's going up at the moment so we've got a countdown here and i'm going to keep my mouse over the little red button um, but it's not going to go now so we're going to so I'll place a down bet now, okay? So I'm going to assume that that candle is now going to go down in price, okay? So see what I mean? It's about waiting for, it's keeping an eye on this, and then a, in your periphery vision, keeping an eye on that candle, and then placing that, that bet, whether it be up or down. Now, this price here, it could go up, could go down. Hopefully it'll go up, so I can show you how to place that second bet. And I can't help myself to go and have a quick look at Neo BTC while we're here. Yeah, I think there's mileage in Neo BTC if you want to do some practicing with that. Okay, so we're going to lose this bet. Okay, so I'm keeping an eye on this countdown and I'm now going to go back to my red button. Okay, looks like we're going to win it. <laughs> but either way, we've got four. Three, two, one. Okay. So I would now place a down bet. See how that I'd lost that within a few seconds? So I would have placed another down bet for that to go down. Hopefully that has helped. Does that help if uh, I was conscious of the time now? Did that, uh, Rocco, if you could just let me know? if that has, has helped you with the placing of the second bet, or if anybody else has got any last minute questions, because obviously I'm conscious that, um, you know, we, we have overrun tonight. Have a quick drink. Yes, it does. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Great. Okay, so let's have a quick look at Neo BTC. Yeah, I if if you're going to do some practicing, I would have a look at Neo BTC um, for 
for a while now because I think there's there's going to be some opportunities there for you and perhaps have a play with the uh, the year indicators as well you know making them wide making those bands wider or smaller or, or whatever it might be okay all right I'm going to stop sharing all right so um, hopefully that was helpful and um, like I say um, Jeremy is going to be going through uh, I think he's doing a hangout on Friday uh, unfortunately I won't be here um, I've got um, my cousin not my cousin yeah my niece sorry is uh, going to Australia for six months so uh, we're having a leaving deal on Friday so I won't be here uh, but I will be back here again next Wednesday and uh, what we'll do is we'll do some more trading and uh, we might have a look at um, a different style of trading uh, or we may stick with the Bollinger Bands depends on whether you guys have, have got the hang of these Bollinger Bands or whether we need to go through uh, some you know some more examples of that all right if you've got any feedback uh, add it to the uh, the comments below and like I say if you are a member of Zookle already um, just give us a little bit of explanation in the in the comments and don't forget your uh, your Zookle affiliate link if you're an affiliate and um, because like I say um, you know I've obviously I've referred to uh, people to have a look at the comments and uh, obviously they will click on those links so just give yourself a little bit of information um, just say a little bit of who you are and then obviously just pop your affiliate link on there any feedback um, good bad or indifferent really doesn't matter uh, again just add those to the comments and, uh, and I will obviously all basically update those comments as we go through the week and um, right lovely take care and I will uh, speak to you next week bye bye